everybody. I hope you're all doing well. I'm connecting with a client today. I'm going to be sharing distance, energy healing, and psychic wisdom. This is all about weight loss. I recently posted a session. This is the same client with support for weight loss through healing of the subconscious. And I'm going to read these goals out loud before I do. If any of you are interested in exploring a session, come visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. You can share on YouTube or we can do it privately. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. All right. I'm going to read these goals and I want to thank you so much for another opportunity to help you. Thank you so much for sharing with us here. You say, hey, Abby. This is how you put it. Can we redo that session on weight loss and fortify it? Because that night I had an episode <laughs> and ruined it. And can we activate my crown and soul star chakra? Okay. <laughs> All right. I have a lot of thoughts about, about your, your episode. I don't feel like it ruined it at all. And sometimes when you receive just the right kind of healing, there's a lot of fear involved with change. And that fear can get very loud and create an opportunity for it to feel like everything's collapsing, but it's not. So, but we will fortify this, okay? It's okay to have episodes, you know. <laughs> All right. Also, the cool thing about energy work it's not like, I'm doing 30 minutes here, but it's not like just 30 minutes of energy work. It's like days of ripples in the pond of your energy field. So a 30 minute session is going to be a good two weeks of, of sensations of something is different about the way I feel. I'm experiencing myself. I'm experiencing the world around me. I feel transformed. And you'll feel those changes over the next couple of weeks as you adjust to what's new starts to become... Um, a new rhythm, something familiar now. So sometimes we got to let the energy work do the work too over the next couple days. But I'm very curious to dive into your subconscious and even the part of you that, that feels like that episode got in the way of the session. I want to go see who's doing the talking here inside yourself so that I can, um, we can adjust that conversation. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay. And you want crown and soul star chakra. Pretty sure that's also what you'd said. Yep. Okay. Okay, you're really beating yourself up. You... Okay, that's, that's all I'm going to say f for starters. And I feel like there's a corridor. I'm walking down it. And the corridor itself is crooked. And then it's crooked this way. And then it's crooked that way. And I'm trying to walk straight. And then I'm walking kind of sideways, leaning this way and then leaning that way. And nothing is straight about the corridor. Nothing is straight about me. And I can't straighten things out and it's always crooked and nothing is lining up and nothing is, you could say, balanced. And this, this is hard. Okay, so I'm going to go to you and I'm going to ask you, did you do this? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of like, why are you messing with your head? Why are you screwing up the corridor? Why are you forcing yourself to lean back and forth? Why are you challenging yourself like this? Everything can just be straight. You can feel it and you can see it. It's all straight. You've got control over things. What well, part of you says, no, you don't have any control and it's all your fault. And you're the one that's screwy and you're screwing up the corridor and you're making it so it's impossible to achieve any of the goals that you want to achieve. Hmm. Just a minute here because
You're having a response to this. And I feel like there's major, 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 major doorways here that are really thick, really large, locked tight, and you're never going to um, be able to clear them. They're like the ultimate blocks that you're just going to have to live with them for the rest of your life. And they're going to degrade you. These blocks that you created that you can't remove and they're going to degrade you. You've lost. You've lost control, you've lost yourself, you've lost in life completely. I mean, that's how intense this energy is. That's how loud and how raw it is. How convincing it is. I'm really having to pay attention here because there's a hidden messenger. <sighs> Oh, <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm finding the parameters of this hidden messenger, which is going to be unclear, but not really. It's like I'm um, trying to find the parameters of air. Well, it's all around you, right? So it's just all around us. So whatever's all around us, which is this invisible hided, hiding thing, um, I'm just taking it and pushing it away, okay? I'm just pushing it away for right now. So we just clear the air around us of this invisible hiding thing, which is really just a not nice person, not a nice messenger. And it's really like um, the fist that is uh, suffocating and choking you from achieving your goals here and then degrading you for not being able to achieve them and then making you feel like you're never going to be able to and that you're the biggest failure in your own life and blah, 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 okay? So we're just sending all that stuff away so then we can just look eye to eye here. But you really, really have an attachment to this messenger almost like you, you need time in your life where you get beaten or broken down. It feels familiar or it feels nurturing in some way. feels like a good thing, even if you don't need to feel broken down. That's going to be the hardest part, is getting you out of a loop. Because let's say the loop is um, you have achievements, you've worked up the ladder of achievements, and now the loop says, okay, the familiar thing where we're going to break down and all these achievements are, um, everything's going to be at risk, we're going to struggle, um, and then we're going to we're gonna really go downhill, and then we could take it downhill even further if we want to, and then let's see how far we can go because I'm starting to enjoy all this um, um, you know, breaking myself down and then the degradation of myself and it's really familiar and I'm finding this enjoyable. Um, where, what created that loop in the first place? What created the need for self-destruction? And there is a bit of a pleasure about that self-destruction. There's a bit of joy, a bit of playfulness to it, okay? So what if we, we reach that point in your loop, and we're reaching it right now, where you don't have to go downhill this time? where you actually you just step over it and then just say bye-bye to it and then we just sort of ascend to a new loop. And in this loop, you're, anything that would be a moment in time where you go downhill is actually a moment in time where you're going to go up, uphill, which really is supposed to be more like, um, you know, downhill is supposed to be easier, uphill is supposed to be harder, but here we are, this, this uphill is actually um, in everything is going up the ladder of success, okay? It's like I'm going, I'm achieving higher and higher and higher goals. Like it's all happening for me, you know? Instead of we're getting flushed down the toilet. <laughs> we're going up the ladder of success, okay? So I want to change your loop from self-destruction going down the toilet here to um, up the ladder of success. So we need a, we need a, a new rhythm, okay? Okay. 
you don't do anything without permission. And this hidden person, um, you need this hidden person to decide. <laughs> Why though? Why do you need this hidden person to decide? This hidden person Just hear me out here, okay? And basically, it's going to represent sacral chakra energy. And it has multiple, multiple, like 12 penises, okay? It's a highly sexual, a representation of highly sexual. And um, it's like starving for more of that... Um, how do you want to put this? When I see when I see a representation like this, there's there's a major you could say a hole in the sacral chakra, and you're trying to fill it with pleasures, and maybe it's food, or maybe it's um, I don't know, it's 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 like um, pleasures that aren't actually going to satisfy you. They're not going to create longevity of joy in your life. They're going to actually be the illusion of pleasure and not actual real pleasure. And so this um, this friend, this uh, this helper, this this aspect here, um, is more encouraging you to um, find satisfaction or find relief and maybe um, really quick joys that make you feel terrible on, on the other side of them. Like maybe you are gonna hate yourself after you give in to that. It's like any person on a diet is going to kick themselves when they go get some ice cream and then they freaking broke the diet and now they're, they're completely off the hinges and it's going to be two months before they can get back on it again. You know, it's like, it's like you give in to these little pleasures and then you screw yourself over. And that's what this thing represents here. Pleasure, 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 pleasure times like 12, okay? So I'm adjusting your eyes so that you can see this being, okay? I ask you what's really going on inside. Well, what's really, really going on inside here? I feel like it's not this being actually. And I don't even think that it, it's about all these pleasures either. I think there's something even deeper and more real actually. I feel like this being doesn't have any power at all. And I think there's a depression here and there's a lot of deflecting and maybe trying to pinpoint where the real problem is, but it's actually just a depression is really what it is. Maybe wanting to see some some success in some places, like with weight loss, if you could have success there, it would really feel like your life was moving in the right direction. But if there's a depression that you're up against, and that's a that's a totally different story, you know. I'd rather you just be a depressed person, I, I, because there's something um, in the deeper root that that's it's it's. I feel like there's more depth and more honesty to that statement. Because I don't really feel the power of this this um, multi penis man. <laughs> it's like oh, this looming demonic being. No, it's just an illusion. It's just an illusion, and you you're basically handcuffed to something that's more powerful than you. But your mind created it in order to give you an excuse for why you're not strong enough to overcome this thing. But you're not strong enough because you're going through a depression. This is really what I would say that this is. And there's literally, there's no shame in that. My God, look at the world we live in. I think we're all kind of depressed, you know? It's a difficult world we live in. I think there's something raw and true here about this. And I think that's beautiful in its own way because it's human, you know? It's very human. So I'm just really listening here. I'm curious, why why are you attracted to your crown chakra, your soul star chakra? I'm really curious because maybe you, you want to set your higher mind free and maybe that would be the solution to the silent 
depression. You know, it's like the depression is here, but maybe we don't identify it as that. Um, but maybe that's another subconscious thing that if I can open my higher minds, um, that could um, bring joy to me, real genuine joy, because I'll feel a connection with um, higher vibrational beings and that sort of thing will bring you real joy. And you don't need the depression anymore because you don't need it. But yet it's lingering there. Perhaps something is like majorly unfulfilled in your life and perhaps it's been going on for way too long and you just don't know how to fulfill your life. You just don't know how to. Maybe, maybe that's really the wall we're working with here. I'm just, li I'm just listening to you right now, what your thoughts are about this. Just anything you might like to say. You're kind of more of an onlooker, um, just soaking this in and watching through my own eyes what I see. And then contemplating for it for yourself, which is very good. And you should always be um, processing what it means to you in your own way. You cry and you say, you say, okay, okay. I think I think we could agree that there's a there could be a depression there, but you say that there's a familiarity of this being with the many penises uh, that it's a friend of yours. Uh, you really want to know more about who this is. Okay, 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 okay. That that is literally like creating an apparition like actually creating an invisible friend that's not real <laughs> trust me if somebody who has many invisible friends uh, there's a lot of invisible friends that are real this one is like creating and creating an illusion creating a, a pretend uh, something it, it isn't there actually it's it's wanting it to be there but it's not so let's find out what you really are looking for because that's that's not actually real that's that isn't actually real I, I want it to be real for your sake, but it isn't. It's it's actually a, a complete, um, it's like you got a computer, you created some code, um, created a hologram, and then said it was real. It's like, okay, well, we could say that it's real. Yeah, you did create that, that that is real, yeah. But then you could just delete the program and just disappear, bye-bye. Never was real. Was it really even real to begin with? Was it needed though? Yes, for some reason it was needed. That's why we created it. But you don't need it. It's, it's not even real. I don't even want to give it a name. I don't want to give it an identity. I don't want to do anything with it. I just want to delete it and then find you. I want to see you. Are you afraid of seeing you? Maybe this is needed as like a stepping stone for a deeper relationship of love with yourself. You know, maybe you need this. This is real. This is your hardship. No, it's actually you embracing you. You reaching another level of love with you. You know, you're, you, all right, your relationship with you and you're beautiful. And this thing, this thing is just, I don't know. It's like, it's not even that nice of a person. Like you don't want to create a hologram of a not nice person, but I guess it gives you some excuse because if it could be real, then maybe we could blame it on this. It really, it's just, it's just a tool for right now, but you don't need it, okay? You don't need it. This makes you so sad. You're crying and I'm proud of you for crying. And maybe that's the depression. Maybe you aren't really depressed other than you have a weird little conflict thing going on here. And the conflict is a relationship or associated with the sensation of depression. And now as you're being emotional, I mean, you are straight up bawling your eyes out. And there's a really loud sensation in your heart of just an emotional release. I mean, it's rivers of release here. And you, you and we're, we, it's almost like we're going to give in to the reality of this as far as we can take it. And you're crying and crying and crying over the death of a best friend who was always there for you. And that's, and you're just crying and crying and crying. And it is actually appropriate for me to support you through this um, release because you did build a bond with it on a level. I mean, obviously you built a bond with it. You're just crying. There you go again. 
Once the tears are cleared, you're quite certain this being is real. <sighs> okay, okay, I'm gonna ask my guides, do we, do we, do we give you the benefit of the doubt as in like, do we create a space where we say, okay, we're going to follow along that this is real because beneath the surface, it could be connected with something totally out there and random. And this again is just associated with something else. We're trying to get to the something else and we're using this as a stepping stone to get there. So we're just using some sort of middle ground. Everything in my being says, this is a, a hologram. <laughs> I don't want to give it any more time or attention or energy. It's, it's the distraction. It's getting us away from what you want to achieve here. Okay, I'm going to ask God, what do I do to help you in this situation? God says, I need to merge you with this being. And... Your separation from this being is, it's like, it's, it's a separation from yourself. So you could say the program that you typed was actually coming from within you, pulling an extra, a part of you from the inside, then to the outside, then building a bond with that part of yourself at the outside. But really it just needs to return. So the program is returning to the inside of you where it always existed. You then, it'll help you gain the next level of control because you can't be beneath this hologram because you, then you're in prison by something that never was real. You need to be one with it and return it back to what's inside of yourself. There's some kind of damage or smudge we're running into because um, it feels like there's a parallel here between what you're creating and how this is impacting you emotionally and how you feel um, almost like uh, the slave to this than the leader, which is backward. You know, you are in control. You're the leader here. You're not a slave to this. But somewhere in your life, it's, it's almost like you're trying to revisit a memory and reconcile the hurt from an old memory. And by playing out this little role-playing game here, then you can recreate the event of the past and then bring it back into the present. And so you can continue to work through it in the present. And you don't need to, you, 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 you don't have to, you know? You're not wanting to merge with this part. I'm gonna ask you again. Why don't we give this a try and see what happens? If you don't like it, we can put things the way they were. We can just put them back the way they were. Ah, uh, this is better. You're starting to get a very gross and ugly face and your face is turning into like a very gross, like it's almost like a, a shadow demon with a vampire-like face and it looks like a stretched shadow that sort of vibrates with a screechy sound. And again, so it, we're taking it from there and we're bringing it back to you and then it overlays over top of you and starts screaming at me. I'm just laughing. <laughs> I was like, oh, you know, thank you. For, you've made my day. I actually getting yelled at by a, a freaking holographic, stretchy shadow demon. <laughs> I just don't know how to take this seriously. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Hmm. This just makes me laugh so much. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is good. This is uh, this is this is progress here. <sighs> There's a lot a lot still to do, okay? 
so you and this being are merging as one and you're kind of a neutral shutdown you're just like you're like the switch flipped and it's taken over your body it's all a load of bs okay it's like your ego gone mad or something it's just this is all a control thing you need to get yourself back together like with yourself you need to know who you are be grounded in who you are and anything else isn't you send it away or transmute it or hand it to an angel or hand it to god um and then when the time is right you can re reconcile it later then nothing has to be done today it's just up to you what you're ready for you know So I'm looking through this screamy, weird, screechy thing and I look at you and I say it's okay to be yourself. It's okay to be you. And you is a really awesome person. You know the screechy thing in the way, I, I really like you a lot more than... This is just like... It's almost like you do your homework and you accidentally made a mistake. You can't you try to erase it. And you just kind of smears. It doesn't erase all the way. You just write over it. And then it's like, no, I can do a better job. So you erase it. Now the paper's starting to rip. And it's like, hmm. It's just kind of a stain. It's just kind of a, something you can't really erase exactly. And I say, you know, it's up to the teacher and as long as the teacher can get the answer, I think it's okay if you skip a couple lines and scratch that out. And we just start with a fresh uh, couple lines here. I mean, it's not the end of the world. I think we're holding on to something that's not that big of a deal. It's just a little part of a pa paper. I mean, we can even get a fresh new piece of paper and put that in the recycling. Done. Gone. Holding on to something that isn't um, making or breaking anything. It's just, it's not that big of a deal. As I continue to look at you, I look through the shadow and I see you. You have to have the courage to turn your own light bulb on. And the light comes from within yourself. But you don't want to yet. Hmm. And I, I need you to go out on a limb here. Say the grossest thing ever because it's gross to say this when you're kind of in a dark place. But say, I am the light, and the light is on within me. And the reason why it feels gross when you're in a dark place to say the light is on is because everything in that dark place wants you to keep the light off. So it's going to make you feel gross, so you keep the light off. And so you're going to have to turn the light on and freak it all out. I mean, you're going to have to be the scariest Halloween costume in a dark place, which is the light. I mean, you just turn the light on and freak them all out and see what they do. It's kind of funny. <laughs> They're terrified of the light. And it's really just your own veil that you're creating. You don't need it. Also, there's the sound of a heart that um, longs for repair, longs for mending. You know, you're wanting to lose weight. I think there's another side of that... Um, that concept, like, um, you know, when we get heavy, it, it can be a direct, uh, like, there can be other meanings to it. Like, um, my weight becomes a reflection of how I um, energetically feel. I feel heavier emotionally, you know. I feel the weight of the world. I feel, you know, and then you start to kind of mimic it, or your body starts to parallel it, and you become like a physical manifestation of, of something else, some other meaning. And to be lighter, then it makes you feel freer, more like the spirit of who you are. But if you can't allow yourself to be the spirit of who you are, then you're always going to be kind of weighed down, you know? You're going to be heavy. And then what's, what's encouraging you to give in to what isn't working? The screechy shadow guy. It's going to be you. You want to fail. You want to lose. You want to. Be 
Because maybe you could be better at losing than you could be at winning. Maybe it's easier to lose. I mean, let's let's go. Let's imagine you and me. We're gonna go to amusement park. We're gonna bring a hundred bucks, and we're gonna go play some games. And let's so, see how easy it is to lose these carnival games <laughs> than to win them. And if we can own being losers, then we truly won. <laughs> It's like, there's a reason why winning is a, you know, it happens only sometimes and you get to revel in it, you know? It's okay that winning doesn't happen all the time. That's pretty normal, actually. <laughs> it's pretty normal. <laughs> it makes you feel better somehow. See, the screechy thing isn't... It's already starting to look paler and paler and paler because it's almost like um, you ever been around like a, a teenager that um, is really insisting on being in a bad mood and you're trying to cheer them up and they're just not going to give. Could be an adult too. Could be any age really. <laughs> and then you, but you're really de dedicated. You're really devoted. Like I'm going to do whatever it takes to get a smile on your face. I'm going to do whatever it takes. And then if you can give, get them to finally give in and just laugh and they'll hate you for it. Like, how dare you make me happy right now? How dare you? <laughs> how dare you take me out of my like frustration, my suffering, and my anger, and I wanted that. But no, you needed to make me laugh. You needed to make me happy. And then if you, then if you can admit that you actually feel better laughing than you feel better, you know, pouting, <laughs> then you start to let more of that light in, you know? And that's what's happening right now. You're starting to love yourself. And that other thing is getting quieter and quieter because it wasn't real to begin with. It was only as real as you let it or allowed it to become. It's just you let a little part of yourself, like a little burp, get extremely powerful for some reason. And then we're just like, bringing the burp back in and then just silencing it. And now it's just you. It's just you now. And there's no crooked corridor. It's just you. It's just you now. <laughs> it feels good, actually. It feels like we, we did something big deal here. I think you let, let something kind of scribble out of control, but now that it's back where it belongs and it's silent and you're the master and the keeper of yourself and the keeper of your decisions and keeper of your own world and everything feels a lot more, way more harmony going on here. Serenity, breathability. It's almost strange that that ever happened. It's almost confusing. <clears throat> hmm. But you're a bit stiff, like you're just not moving your body at all. You're just stiff and stuck. And I'm trying to oil up your, your joints here, like get your knees, um, get your ankles here. <laughs> like you're kind of like the tin man, you know, who need to be oiled so he could go on his journey to the Emerald City. It's like... You're kind of like the tin man here. Maybe you need good friends in your life, like where you're arm in arm and you're doing your little skippy step down the yellow brick road to the Emerald City. And to have that genuine friendship would nurture every part of you. It would be the best kind of air to breathe. And you wouldn't have to oil your own joints because the joy of a friendship or good people in your life would be that oil for your joints, you know? Then you can do the skippy step. <laughs> and that's real happiness. And that's what makes your body choose to become lighter. Because you just intuitively, you just become lighter. So you were attracted to it. You didn't even have to think about it. It just happened.
you are really a huge weight is just I can't even believe how much weight that was. You were in a big bodysuit, man. And that just like completely, you just, I don't know, like you're the seed inside of an apple. You just, I don't know, but it was just like you just squirted right out and all the rest of it just sloughed off. And you're just like a little seed that was in a peach or so. I don't know, like but you're a little like apple seed, okay? But it was in a squishy type fruit and it just popped right out of there. But it was a heavy body sack. <laughs> and you need to give yourself credit. You need to compliment yourself. You need to look in the mirror and like what you see. And you need to, from the heart, okay? Oh, you feel so much better. <sighs> And automatically, there's already clearing for your crown and your soul star chakra. There's clearing for all your chakras. You're breathing in again. You feel like yourself. You feel like you're flying through the air still. It's the seed that popped right out still in the air flying like a mighty mouse or something, like a little mini seed just going places. <sighs> you feel easy going. You feel laughable. You feel lightheaded, lighthearted. You feel full of light, emanating light. You're happy to be alive. <sighs> I don't sense, a d sense the sound of depression anymore. It's like just a little blip we need to go through that. As you feel like you're hopeful, you feel um, better than hopeful, you feel... Um, not like you need the hope, you just feel, you feel good, okay? I'm really glad I could do that for you. I mean, I could feel the difference from the beginning, and I can feel the difference now, and it's like, wow, totally, totally transformed. So just let the ripples happen, okay? And take it easy, and be kind to yourself, and make self-loving decisions, and you're the master here. You're the master and sometimes change takes baby steps, too. Just take the time, you know? Take the time. And remember, you're, you're connected to you, and you are the one making the decisions here. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for this. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope you all have a great day.